Well guys, welcome to this video on the muscular system. In this video, we're going to think about the impact of age on your muscles. What does age do? As you get older, how does it affect the way that your muscles work um, and their size and their efficiency and their function? And we're going to focus in on one concept in particular. And that concept is the concept of sarcopenia. Sarcopenia. Now, sarcopenia simply means the loss of muscle mass and therefore the loss of function that's associated with losing that muscle mass. Sarcopenia as a word, that's sarco you'll have come across before, reading and thinking and watching videos about uh, muscles. Sarco, sarcomia, sarcoplasmic and so on. Sarco means related to muscles, it comes from the Greek word for flesh. And penia means a lack. If you haven't got much, um, then that, that suffix penia means lack of muscle sarcopenia lack of muscle um, so we're going to talk about how that occurs as we get older uh, and look and talk a little bit about um, the the responses that we can make to that that loss of muscle mass and that loss of muscle function but first of all let's talk about um, actually how it occurs so here's a graph and um, what we're going to talk about is we're going to roughly split our life stages into three we're going to see um, across the axis, the x-axis at the bottom, we've got age. I've not been particularly specific about the ages here um, as we pass from early life into adult life into older life um, because it's somewhat different for all of us. Um, and these are just general ideas as we progress through the life stages. It's not possible to say for definite that every single one of us, for example, will pass from adult life into older life on a particular date. Um, so we're just talking about phases generally. Then up on the y-axis on the left hand side we've got muscle mass and muscle strength. Now those two things obviously not exactly the same but they're so closely related to one another uh, that it makes sense for us to have them as the same thing on the diagram because they essentially give us the same kind of understanding. So let's talk about early life to begin with then. Um, and we're, we're basically mapping on this, on this graph, or we're graphing on this graph, um, what happens to our muscle mass as we go through our years. So in early life, obviously, what happens is our muscle mass increases until it gets to a point of its peak. Now, um, what you'll notice on this graph is, or, is the, the way that the, the line splits into three. If you notice that the line splits into three, and this is simply to try and represent the fact that during um, and post puberty, uh, the muscle mass um, variation within the population is quite large. So there are those in the red zone at the bottom who, who obviously do put on muscle mass because they grow since they were born. Um, so they obviously increase in the, in the uh, amount of muscle mass that they're carrying, but perhaps not as much as some others. So those that increase in, uh, in muscle mass a significant degree in early life get to a higher peak than those that don't. So the ones that, um, that I guess you could think of the, the muscular ones, uh, those that put on a lot of muscle mass in their teenage years, uh, approaching their early 20s, so muscular, those would be represented in the green part of the graph. So we've got a bit of variation in the population here, um, but everybody essentially... Um, barring illness and disease uh, and other kinds of disorders, everybody pretty much fits into this uh, into this variation on the graph. And so in early life, what's happening is essentially the muscle mass uh, is going to reach its peak. And that's essentially determined both by our, our genetics, our DNA, uh, and also other factors such as whether we exercise and what kind of exercise we do. So then once we've come through early life and we've tried to um, maximize that peak of muscle mass um, whether or not we've done any additional exercise to maximize it further or whether it's just through genetic progress uh, as we've grown we then come into the phase of adult life and essentially what happens during adult life once we've reached our peak is we need to try and maintain our muscle mass so we're going to try and maintain that peak as close to that peak as possible now as you can see on the graph uh, our total muscle mass does begin to decline. It does begin to decline. And we can say that it begins to decline somewhere around about the age of 30, 35, uh, somewhere in the 30s, essentially. And obviously, again, as I've, I've said, it's going to be variable across the population. It will differ somewhat. So these are just generic or general ideas to, to kind of grasp hold of here. 
but let's say from around about the age of 35 our muscle mass when we reached our peak uh, at the end of early life um, and at the early part of our adult life um, that muscle mass then begins to decline and the speed at which it, it declines um, again is variable as you can see on the on the graph so for those in the strongest section of the population again shown in green on the graph their decline is somewhat less during their adult life than those in the red section so it goes to show how important it is uh, in in your youth uh, and in your younger years if possible um, to maintain or maximize a nice high peak of muscle mass if you possibly can because it's much easier than to maintain that peak throughout adult life and what tends to happen as we go through adult life is there's an acceleration in loss of muscle mass acceleration in sarcopenia um, and so here we have then moving into older life and again I'm not putting a specific date on this as to when we pass from adult life into older life um, it's variable depending on the individual but what you'll notice is as we move into older life the strongest group um, stays above this dotted line and the weakest group drops below this dotted line so you can see here um, on the on the graph now what we're trying to do in the in the section uh, labeled older life is we're trying to minimize the loss of muscle mass and that's because as we said again um, total muscle mass is directly related to things like muscle strength and other kinds of muscle function so we're trying to reduce the loss of that muscle mass we're trying to minimize sarcopenia it's going to happen but we want to slow it down as much as we can and in a moment we'll talk about how we actually go about doing that so on this diagram we've got some dotted lines here uh, and these dotted lines um, that are running vertically between life stages um, don't represent exact ages um, but represent phases if you like tra transitions into the next phase and transition into the next phase will be dependent upon um, the muscle mass and uh, your diet and things related to nutrition and things related to disease and lifestyle factors and so on will determine the the um, the, the steepness uh, the gradient of this decline notice there is uh, this dotted line across the bottom what's that all about so this dotted line across the bottom represents the point at which muscle mass has dropped sufficiently low to now be a problem in terms of muscle function for everyday living okay so uh, that dotted line represents where if muscle mass drops below that point it provides us a problem with getting out and about uh, with a certain degree of strength that's required for healthy living so you can imagine or you can conceive of this dotted line as being the point at which you'd, you'd like to stay above it in order to remain healthy and you can see how important this becomes in older life so in adult life those impacts may or may not be obvious there may be some some difference in body shape and so on but whether or not it impacts one's health is uh, another issue but certainly if you are in that weakest section of the population you have the lowest uh, muscle mass you are much more likely to drop below this line this dotted line in older life and therefore have issues related to health and well-being in your older life I and mean, it's not a guarantee but generally across the board that's the way that it looks so we need to try and minimize that loss during older life and if you possibly can the best way to minimize loss in older life is in early life to maximize the peak if you're past that point already there's not much you can do you can't turn back time but you can try and maintain that peak as high as you possibly can so let's let's do just do some numbers here um, let's start off by talking about point a on the graph so this is the point at which um, we've maximized our muscle mass so you can see here I've got a cross section um, which I believe I'm not absolutely 100% certain I couldn't find the information but I believe this is a thigh uh, cross section a CT scan from a thigh um, and you can see the darker um, the darker gray is the muscle and then the lighter gray around the outside of the muscle is the fat content and so you can see at point a where we've maximized our peak and in fact this diagram uh, represents the age of 25 
you can see a significantly larger large proportion of muscle in comparison to a proportion of fat tissue and this is important because therefore we've got a high level of muscle mass and a high percentage of muscle mass at age 25 as evidenced in this diagram let's compare that however to the later point point b on the diagram um, where we've got this a cross section through the same uh, muscle at age 63 so this is age 63 and what you can clearly see is the decline both in muscle mass itself but also the proportional or the percentage decline in muscle mass compared with or in relation to the increase in fat tissue so you can see the fat tissue around the muscle here the lighter gray around the muscle has increased uh, hugely in comparison to the shrinking muscle mass so this is essentially a pictorial representation of what sarcopenia is it's a reduction in muscle mass but it almost always comes with an increase in proportion of fat tissue um, and in fact um, by 75 the, the the change is massively marked so in terms of some numbers um, here are some numbers for this so um, diagram a or picture a if we take that to be around about the age 20 um, you can say that the muscle mass is somewhere around about 30 percent this is not just for this muscle but across the body and uh, the proportion of fat in the body is, is somewhere around 20 percent obviously it can be significantly lower for highly trained individuals but let's say let's stick with these uh, average figures for somebody in their 20s um, muscle mass about 30% and fat mass or fat tissue about 20% of the total body weight well what about if we move then uh, to age 75 what does it look like well you'll notice now muscle mass has halved and fat mass has doubled so whereas muscle mass was 30% at age around about 20 now when we get to age 75 that muscle mass is there's still muscle there but that muscle mass has decreased to 15% of the overall mass of the body whereas the fat mass or the fat tissue has doubled um, to 40% so muscle has halved over that span of years and fat tissue has doubled and this is what we mean by sarcopenia the, the massive reduction in muscle mass and obviously it has all sorts of impacts in terms of health so let's think about what those impacts uh, might be just really briefly and then get into how we can try and offset this reduction how can we how can we slow down sarcopenia how can we make this graph as shallow as possible and not too steep so we don't get below that dotted line and end up having health issues later in life and as we know sarcopenia results in reduced strength it results in reduced power output and all sorts of associated muscle functions so how do we offset those things we need to directly target through exercise those muscle functions we need to target strength we need to target power and we need to target some of those other associated muscle functions in order to keep sarcopenia at bay so the first thing we can do is to do some aerobic exercise and aerobic exercise provides at least a partial solution to sarcopenia um, because what it does is it slows down the decay in mitochondrial function now you'll know from previous videos that the mitochondria are what we sometimes refer to as the powerhouse of the cell it's the mitochondria that enable us to create the energy um, for movement for muscular movement in fact there are mitochondria in all of our cells near enough in all of our cells producing energy for those cells to stay alive so if you multiply that up to the organism um, scale we need our mitochondria to be functioning well and aerobic exercise has been shown to be really helpful in our younger years to produce increased mitochondria increased numbers of mitochondria increased mitochondria function and in our later years to slow down their decay so aerobic exercise is going to be really helpful because
because it's going to help it's going to ameliorate any problems that are derived from issues with the mitochondria and that might include things like uh, tiredness uh, fatigue and so on also other kinds of exercise that we we should do regularly uh, include resistance exercises now strengthening the muscle mass and um, working on muscle strength and muscle power is going to massively improve um, our chances of reducing sarcopenia if that makes sense so resistance exercise in particular where we're targeting our muscles and where we're trying to strengthen our muscles and also to some extent improve the power output of our muscles is going to hugely help in uh, keeping the muscle mass from wasting away so you need to do some regular as you get older you need to engage in and stay engaged in regular resistance exercise now obviously as you get into your 70s and, and onwards that the resistance that you can uh, you can move the weights that you can move is going to reduce but that doesn't mean you should stop just lower the weights and carry on as much as you possibly can continue with your resistance exercises continue with this strengthening and as much as you possibly can given other factors like whether your knees are any good uh, which hopefully they are if you're still regularly regularly exercising you can continue to do things like power exercises uh, to the extent that that's possible but certainly strengthening exercises to retain as much as possible this muscle mass and obviously the muscle function um, things like uh, proprioceptive function uh, where you're aware of how your muscles are moving in in space is going to help enormously in delaying frailty reduce the the risk of things like trips and falls um, reduce the the problems reaching and carrying and so on these are all going to be helped with regular exercise and prevent you from if you think back to the graph on the previous slide prevent you from dropping into that zone where your health and well-being starts to be affected now most of all it's important to recognize that both of these types of exercise are important as we age in order to reduce the impact of sarcopenia a combination of aerobic exercise and resistance exercise is going to provide the benefits of both types of exercise and those and both of those sets of benefits are going to be really important so wherever you are in the life stage whether you're in the early phase whether you're in the middle phase or in the late phase aerobic exercise and resistance exercise are both going to be really important uh, for you no matter what phase you're in whether you're building muscle mass maintaining muscle mass or trying to uh, offset the effects of sarcopenia both of these types of exercise are going to be really important hope that's been a helpful video for you uh, don't forget to like it and subscribe uh, and maybe put me some comments in the comments below tell me what else you'd like me to focus on in future videos thanks for watching take care see you next time